Welcome back to our tutorial on developing Game Boy games in C. Today we're going to be looking at what called meta sprites, so where you're actually using more than one sprite, more than one 8x8 pixel sprite to create your game characters. So in this case we've got a bug and a ship, and they're both created out of four sprites, so they're 16 pixels by 16 pixels. And this is a key skill you're going to need to learn how to load them and how to move them to actually create games that are more like commercial games with much more detail in your characters. So let's get started. So today we're going to be building on a lot of things you've learned in the previous tutorials, but then introducing some new things. What we're looking at today is meta sprites. In a lot of the examples I've shown you previously, all of our characters have just been 8 pixel by 8 pixel, so they've been one sprite. And in Game Boy Tile Designer we've just been able to draw them in here. Obviously that's not very useful for real games, you want bigger sprites with more detail. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So the first step is actually drawing your sprite. So in whatever paint package you want to use, I'm just using paint.net here. Um, you can actually come into paint.net and turn on the pixel grid, which helps a little bit. And effectively I've just drawn my sprite here. But the important thing is if you want to be able to do the next step in Game Boy Tile Designer, you need to make sure that you use these colours here. So what I've just done is screenshotted those colours and I've used the eyedropper tool that's in here just to be able to pick the colour I want and use that when I'm drawing with the pencil tool here. So I've drawn my ship, you'll see it's a 16 by 16 so it's four sprites effectively and I've drawn a little bug. Uh, as you can see I'm hopefully a more talented programmer than I am a designer. Um, but what we're going to do now is once you've drawn them is just to copy them into the clipboard and then if we go into Game Boy Tile Designer, so if I do Edit, Split to Paste, you'll see it's now split it into four. So I've got my top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And we're going to do exactly the same for the bug, but we need to make sure we've got the fourth empty tile selected before we do it. So if we go back to the bug, Edit, Copy, Edit, Split Paste. So there we've got all our files, all our tiles in there for all the different ones. So we've now got eight different tiles for two different characters. So now we're going to do what we normally do. So we're going to export it to a C file, export to, change this to be a C file. I'm going to call it Game Sprites. And we're going to go from zero to seven because there are eight tiles. And we're going to save it to our meta sprites directory and call it game sprites. Now, if we click OK, if we go back into Visual Studio Code, we now should have game sprites and it should have all our sprites in there. OK, so that's how you kind of design and get your meta tiles in. Now, we're going to show you how to actually build sprites out of them and what that looks like. So we're actually going to introduce to a new kind of concept in C. We're going to show you how to use structs. So structs are a good way of grouping together properties that you want to relate together. So in our case, we're going to create a struct that is a game character, and we're going to give it uh, an X position, a Y position, a width, a height, and we're going to also track which sprites belong to which character. So we're going to create a new file in here. So if we come up here and call it game character. See, uh, and then as ever, so you don't have to watch me type, I'm going to copy that in and talk it through it. So bring in the standard GB, um, GBDK file, otherwise lots of these won't work. Uh, I'm going to call this special kind of reserved word called struct, which tells C that this is a structure that we're building. I'm going to call it game character, and then you open the curly braces, and inside it you put the different variables that belong to this structure. So there's a array, which is what the square brackets mean, that's got four entries in it called sprite IDs, and all the entries are U bytes, unsigned bytes. There's an X and a Y, which are both int eights, and a width and a height. So we're going to assume for this tutorial that all our characters use four sprites, so they're all 16 by 16 to keep it nice and simple. So then we just need to include that new struct file in our main.c, so include game character .c. Now we can start using it in here. And we're actually going to have two game characters. So we write struct 
game character ship and then we'll do the same again for bug. So these are basically declaring these as variables, member variables at the top that can be used anywhere within the code here. And you'll see we'll set them later. Um, they are of the type struct, they are the particular struct game character that we wrote, and they are our ship and bug. So now we need to actually set the properties for this ship and bug struct. And we're going to do that in a slightly cleaner way in that we're going to create methods particular to each one. So I'm going to do a void, it means a method doesn't return anything, set up ship. And inside here we're going to set up that ship struct in the way we need it to. So we're going to set the x variable, so ship.x, and we're going to set that at 80, which is uh, in the middle of the screen. Ship.y, we're going to set near the bottom of the screen ship.width, uh, they're all 16, and ship.height equals 16. So that's setting all the values of that struct that we're going to use throughout the game. I've missed out on equals there. Now we need to load the sprites for this. So we're going to do that in the same way we've done all the other ones. But again, I'm not going to make you watch me do that. So as we've done previously, we're going to load set sprite. So sprite zero is tile zero. So we go back into here, that's this tile. Sprite one is tile one, two, two, three, three. And then we're going to set the sprite ID, the array of setup of the ship struct to be the tile number we're creating. So here we're saying that the first sprite in ship is sprite zero that we created in this line. The second one is one, two, three, four. So it basically means at any point in time we can look at the ship struct and figure out which tiles belong to it. And the last thing we're going to need to do here is to actually move the game character. But I'm going to show you in a moment how we're going to create one method that moves the character. So we'll come back to that in a moment and we'll just do the same as this for the bug. So we've got setup bug, we set the x and y the width, and we load all the sprites exactly the same as bug. We've now got two methods we can call in our main that will actually set these up. So we're going to call these here. Okay, so that will actually have loaded them up, but what it won't have done yet is actually displayed them on the screen because we're not telling the GBDK where to move the sprite to. So we're going to have a look at that next. So what we're going to do is create a new method called move game character, and this is really the kind of interesting bit of today's tutorial. So it's going to take a game character as a struct, and we'll go through what some of this means in a moment, and it's going to take a position for the X and a position for the Y, and it's going to move all the sprites, as you'll see in a moment. Now there's a few little bits here. So we've got struct, game character, hopefully you understand that's passing in one of these, and then we've got this. So this asterisk here is a special thing in C, that means rather than pay, passing in a copy of a game character, we're going to pass in what's called a pointer. So we said last time if you haven't done much C yet, you should go and look at that beginner's guide to C. I'll put another link in the description today. But basically this is telling C to look at a memory pointer for it. So it's saying this object belongs here in the memory. It's not a copy of it, but this is where you can go and look at it. And that's what this means here, that we want to pass a memory pointer into it so we can modify values in it. If we passed a copy of it, we wouldn't be able to modify the original. So in here, what we're going to do is what we normally do. We're going to do move sprite. But this time, we need to know um, the sprite IDs that belong to each one here. And we know there are four, because every character has four. So we're just going to list through. We're going to say character. And normally, we'd do dot here, and we'd get sprite IDs. But when we pass through a pointer, we have to use a different way of doing it. So we have to do an arrow like this. And you'll see it starts to auto-complete now. So we want sprite IDs. We want the first sprite ID for this game character. And we're going to move that to the new X and Y coordinates that we've been asked to move up here. So for the next one down, we need to know what size each sprite is. So we're just going to create a new member variable at the top here, which is a U byte. It's say, basically saying that the size of a sprite is 8, and we're going to use that when we move the next sprite down. So we know that the next sprite down is going to be sprite IDs 1. And that, if you look in here, is going to be 
for the ship it's going to be this sprite and for the bug it's going to be this sprite. Now if you can remember what the originals look like then this tile over here belongs to the right so it's 8 pixels to the right. This tile belongs below so it's 8 pixels below. This tile belongs below and to the right so it's 8 pixels down and 8 pixels across. So we're going to use the knowledge that that's how they're built up to move each sprite in this meta sprite. So you can see here we're going to do, we do x plus sprite size and it's going to be the same y coordinate for this one. We basically do this all the way down. So the second sprite, the third sprite, this one is going to be y plus sprite size and this one is going to be x plus sprite size and y plus sprite size. So we're just using the fact that we know how these sprites are built with one, two, three, four layout to be able to move all of a character in one go. So now when we call this for each um, sprite, so if we call it in setup ship here, so we're going to move game character and we're going to pass in ship, but don't forget that ship needs to be a pointer. So the way to convert from here to a pointer is to put ampersand in front of it. So ampersand ship, comma, and then the new position we want it to be. So the initial position is ship.x and ship.y that we've created above. And we can do exactly the same for bug. So we've now got our ship loading in, we've got the moving of characters. What we haven't actually done is bring in any of those tiles yet. So we need to go and include our game sprites. And then we need to load our sprites like we normally do. We need to do that before we do set up ship and set up bug. So loading zero to eight from game sprites. Now we should be able to compile and see what that looks like. There you go, we've got our main character on here. The reason you can't see the bug at the moment is that he's set just off the screen uh, because a Y position of zero is gonna have him slightly off the screen. So you'll see him when we actually animate in a moment. So we've got the basic meta sprite loaded, but obviously there's not much we're doing with it at the moment. We need to actually be moving it around the screen a little bit. So let's actually put some joystick controls in and be able to move this around and show you how to do that. So hopefully you've seen how we use the joypad before. We're just going to sit inside the while loop and use it. So if joypad and left So if you press left on the joypad, we want to move the ship two to the left. So we're going to change the struct. So ship.x. And we're going to use a special thing you have in programming. Rather than doing equals ship.x minus two, we can shortcut that. So we're going to do minus equals, which is the same as ship.x minus whatever we put after this. So ship.x minus equal two will get rid of two from ship.x's value. And then we move the game character again. So the game character we're moving is ship. We need to do the ampersand again to pass it as a pointer. And we're moving it to the new location, which is ship.x and ship.y. So that's moving to the left. And let's move to the right as well. So when you move to the right, we're going to do plus equals rather than minus equals because it's going to add two to it. And that should be everything we want. Again, we're going to use, um, rather than the delay function, if you've been keeping up with our tutorials, we're going to use performance delay. So it's a little method that you can copy and paste in. So we're going to do it there. And then we'll actually copy the method in. So when you call delay the built-in function, it can actually lock the CPU and use up a bit more power on your Game Boy than you need to, whereas performance delay is going to wait for this VBL done event. Basically, VBL done is called every time the screen has finished writing. So we can use this as a more performant way of putting a delay in. Uh, so we're just going to do a delay of five. It just means that if you hold down your left or right, you won't suddenly jump across the screen. There'll be a little bit, it will slow it down a bit. So if we make that and look at it, you can see if I move the left and right now, that the whole tile is moving around. 
So because we've created this move game character and that handles moving all the sprites, that's really how the meta sprites work. That you know what sprites are contained by one character and you're moving them and doing whatever operations you're doing on all of them uh, at the right location. So that's how you can do bigger characters. Okay, let's make the bug do something a bit interesting. So if we want to start making this feel a bit like a game, then we actually want the bug to be moving down the screen. So in our loop, we're actually going to move the bug a little bit each time. So in here, we're just going to do every loop. I want the bugs Y to move down five. And then we're going to call move game character on the bug again. And that'll make the bug move down the screen. There we go. And I can move around. But you'll notice he's coming down the screen and then he disappears for quite a long while and then he comes back. And that's because actually the screen width is bigger than this in memory. It's just this is what you can see on your screen. So it's actually carrying on further down here. So we need to write a bit of code that the moment he's off what we know to be the screen that he starts again at the top. So let's just go and adapt that a little bit. So we want to do it after we've set the Y position, but before we move the bug. So if bug.y, got my spacing messing around now. If the bug.y is bigger than the screen height, so the Game Boy screen height is 144, so either bigger than or equal to. So if it's bigger than 144, then we want to reset it to zero. So bug.y equals zero and then move the game character so if we compile again so you should see the moment he goes off the screen he comes back on the screen it's pretty straightforward um, but it's a bit of a dull game at the moment because obviously I can just stay out of the way by staying where I am so let's make it a bit more interesting so I could randomly uh, a sign where the bug appears on the screen um, but random is a bit more complicated we'll show that maybe in a future lesson what actually I'm just going to do is set the bugs X to be the ships X so every time the bug gets to the top of the screen it's basically going to then start coming down where the ship is so I'm safe not a problem ah no he's chasing me so if I move around He'll kind of follow me, but if I stay still, he will eventually just go straight through me. He won't hit me. There's no kind of collision there. And actually, that's what our next tutorial is going to be after this one, is we're going to show you how to actually detect that he's hit something and effectively end the game in this case. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've followed it. If you've got any questions, please put them below. But otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.